during the war in Iraq that began in March 2003. Personnel of the United States Army and the Central Intelligence Agency committed a series of human rights violations against detainees in the Abu Ghraib prison in Iraq. These violations included physical and sexual abuse, torture, rape, sodomy, and murder. The abuses came to widespread public attention with the publication of photographs of the abuse by CBS News in April 2004. The incidents received widespread condemnation both within the United States and abroad. Although the soldiers received support from some conservative media within the United States, the administration of George W. Bush asserted that these were isolated incidents, not indicative of General U.S. policy. This was disputed by humanitarian organizations such as the Red Cross, Amnesty International, and Human Rights Watch. These organizations stated that the abuses at Abu Ghraib were not isolated incidents, but were part of a wider pattern of torture and brutal treatment at American overseas detention centers, including those in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Guantanamo Bay. Several scholars stated that the abuses constituted state-sanctioned crimes. The United States Department of Defense removed 17 soldiers and officers from duty, and 11 soldiers were charged with dereliction of duty, maltreatment, aggravated assault and battery, between May 2004 and March 2006. These soldiers were convicted in courts martial, sentenced to military prison, and dishonorably discharged from service. Two soldiers. Specialist Charles Grainer and PFC Lindai England were sentenced to 10 and 3 years in prison, respectively. Brigadier General Janis Karpinski, the commanding officer of all detention facilities in Iraq, was reprimanded and demoted to the rank of colonel. Several more military personnel who were accused of perpetrating or authorizing the measures, including many of higher rank, were not prosecuted. It was reported that most inmates were innocent of the crimes they were accused of and were simply detained due to their being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Documents popularly known as the torture memos came to light a few years later. These documents, prepared shortly before the 2003 invasion of Iraq by the United States Department of Justice, authorized certain enhanced interrogation techniques generally held to involve torture of foreign detainees. The memoranda also argued that international humanitarian laws, such as the Geneva Conventions, did not apply to American interrogators overseas. Several subsequent U.S. Supreme Court decisions, including Hamden v. Rumsfeld 2006, have overturned Bush administration policy and ruled that Geneva Conventions apply. Many of the torture techniques used were developed at Guantanamo Detention Center, including prolonged isolation, the frequent flyer program, a sleep deprivation program whereby people were moved from cell to cell every few hours so they couldn't sleep for days, weeks, even months, short shackling in painful positions, nudity, extreme use of heat and cold, the use of loud music and noise, and preying on phobias. Subscribe our channel for more such informative short video.